Hey, what is up watch fam? My name is Michael and I'm usually the editor for Theo and Harris, but today I got the keys to drive. So Christian and Anna gave me permission to make a video for the Theo and Harris channel and I figured what better way to introduce myself than to do a review on the Apple Watch. Quick disclaimer, this is not a review of the Apple Watch. If you do want to see a review, you can check out Hodinky, you can check out MKBHD, Unbox Therapy. There's just thousands of Apple Watch videos getting pumped out right now by the Apple fan base, so you can go look at those. But before we do that quick wristwatch check, I I am wearing my Rolex 1601. Got it from the TNH watch shop. Love it. Things beautiful. Wouldn't sell it for the world. Uh, we'll go into that in a little bit. So here's the deal. Hodinkee released a video review on the Apple Watch along with a little write-up they did about it, reviewing it, praising it, saying it's good for this, good for this, bad for this, whatever, so on and so forth. And they really said, you know, Apple's getting into their stride with the Apple Watch as they do usually with the fourth generation of their products. But when I saw Hodinkee review the Apple Watch Series 3 last year, I kind of had the reaction of like, what the hell is going on? Like, why is Hodinkee reviewing the Apple Watch? And I looked at the comments of this newest video and there are basically a lot of people wondering the same thing. And then I kind of realized that, that this Apple Watch is something that Although the watch community isn't really on board with, it is taking the watch world in general by storm. And I know that sucks to hear, but it is. I went to the mall to go see a movie and there was a line literally trailing down the mall of people waiting in line the day before at the Apple Store to get their hands on the Apple Watch Series 4. And besides the tiny fact that Hodinkee may have gotten paid to make the Apple Watch review, there's also the fact that this gadget, I don't even want to say watch, is selling so much and becoming such an impactful thing, it can't be ignored. The last time we tried to ignore something in the watch world, we had the quartz crisis, and we all know how that went. Whether we like to admit it or not, this watch is exploding. It's outselling so many watch companies. Of course, though, the thing I hate, though, is Apple's like, it's outselling Rolex. Like, yeah, okay, and Toyota's outselling Ferrari. You're really not comparing things here at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the claim that although the watch is exploding in popularity and people are wearing them all the time here and there, you see them everywhere, that's not gonna affect our watch world really at all. And here's my reasoning. A long, long time ago in a watch world far away, everyone or almost everyone had a watch on their wrist. It was just something that was a day-to-day -day thing. You didn't have something else on your body to give you time or to tell you the time, so you had to have something. Of course, that started with the pocket watch, then World War One came and soldiers needed a different way to hold their watches, so there came the utilitarian like strap around your pocket watch, moved on to Cartier making the first wrist watch, so on and so forth, boom. Watches are born, watches are a necessity. If you can afford a watch, you have a watch on your wrist. Then watches, of course, evolved with time, but there really wasn't something to kick them in the face and say you're done. We don't need watches anymore. They've been a constant and really still are a constant. I mean, it's not weird to see someone with a watch on. But until the birth and explosion of cell phones, there wasn't something else really besides maybe a beeper or something like that that you had on your body that was going to tell you the time. Fast forward to, I think, 2004. Steve Jobs walks on stage in front of that big black screen and says that him and his team created something that is an iPod, is an internet browser, and a phone all in one, and he releases the iPhone and everybody in the theater goes and Essentially what happened was the smartphone as we know it was born. Now this is something that of course evolved, but now is a staple in society. You cannot really get around, at least in the United States and many other countries, without a phone. People will wonder why you don't have a phone. Why aren't you always connected? Why this, why that, why this, why that? And now of course we hear the argument all the time of why do I need to wear a watch if I have a phone? The watch fam is like, oh, hand finished movements and the Royal Oak and the Nautilus and stuff like that. But really, if we look at the world as a whole, a lot of people just don't need it anymore and they don't want it or they just don't like something on the wrist. A lot of my friends that I try to get into the world of watches are just like, I don't like the feeling of it on my wrist and I have my phone in my pocket, so why would I need it? But then comes the Apple Watch. Of course, Apple totes it as something revolutionary and life-changing, but it's really not. If we're gonna be 100% honest, I've tried the Apple Watch. I had the Series 0 and the Series 1 way back when, and I just, I sold it in like a week because there really, there isn't anything that I need. And what's funny is that you get into the same argument where I was saying, why would I need the Apple Watch when I have my phone? It's something where, it's making my life a, maybe a tiny bit more convenient, but it's really not. I can just reach into my pocket, nine times out of 10, the watch says, 
look in your pocket. Like, go on your phone to finish this action. And that's why the Apple Watch is such a weird category, because it's called a watch, but I really don't consider it a watch. I consider a watch something whose primary function is to tell the time. And of course you can argue that, well, that's this primary function, but when you have so many other things built around it, you have fitness tracking, you have a heart rate monitor, you have messaging, you have photos, you have so much stuff that has nothing to do with time, it kind of muddles up the entire fact that this is just a thing created for time. So it runs into this category of a disposable wristwatch, but it's kind of its own thing. It's not a Daniel Wellington, Mark Kors, whatever. Some of you may not think those are disposable, but a lot of the times what I see is people wearing a broken Daniel Wellington on their wrist or a Michael Kors on their wrist with no battery. It just, it doesn't matter. It's a piece of jewelry. And that's kind of what we have here. Not really a piece of jewelry because it's very, very, very functional. It does a plethora of things and it does them very well. It's a great product if that's what you're looking for, but that's not what the watch fam is looking for. We're looking for something of a very specific category and I've noticed it basically through everyone that has an affinity for watches. There also is a tie to just wanting something of quality that will also last and grow with you. No matter how much you love the Apple Watch Series 4, if you love it, it's going to be outdated in a year. It's going to be even more outdated in two years. Three years, it's almost unusable. And it makes you realize that the Apple Watch, although you may think it's pretty or functional or whatever, it's not something built to last no matter how high quality Apple makes it. If they made this thing 200 meters water resistant, you could bang it against anything, sapphire, glass, whatever, still doesn't matter because in three years, it's too old. There's a newer version of it that does what it used to do better. You can tell time better and better and better to a point. I will never get mad if my Rolex is two seconds off during the day or if it's 10 seconds off or 20 seconds off. I won't ever notice. You can make it better and better and better, but this is my watch and this is a watch that was built in 1970 and it's mine. This is a watch I premiered my first ever feature film in. I did my last improv show in college with. I was in the hospital with this watch. I've done so many different things in my life with this watch. I've met people that are gonna stay in my life forever, some people that aren't all with this guy right here, and this watch has served as a companion. This guy is not that. At most, this is gonna last for four years, five years. And just like your phone, there's really no sentimental value. Christian talked about it in one of his videos where the biggest thing that you want from your phone when you get a new one is the pictures. The rest of this, you could just throw away. It doesn't matter. It's something made to be used and thrown away. Plain and simple, if you wanted a nice leather strap for your Apple Watch and you bought the one on Theo and Harris, that strap is gonna outlast the watch, which is something that always blows my mind. You would have to keep upgrading your watch so that way it can stay with the strap, not vice versa. You don't have to get a new strap for your watch, you have to get a new watch for your strap. Because these watches are made to just be old. And that's something very interesting about the Apple Watch and the phone and laptops and stuff in general, but more specifically, when we look at it as something wearable and a fashion accessory, the Apple Watch doesn't get vintage, it gets outdated. The solid gold Universal Genève pole router that Theo and Harris is offering right now in their watch shop is 58 years old and I still want that watch so much. I want that watch every single day. I have to edit Christian wearing it or Anna wearing it and I'm just like, damn, that I want. Because that very watch and my Datejust and the Samariner and so many other watches are just built to exist and to exist forever. If it's 7.05 and my Rolex says 7.05 and 40 seconds, doesn't matter. The thing is already 48 years old and doing its job perfectly. I just need to get it serviced every now and again. That's why the Apple Watch can never touch a true wristwatch. We're not looking at the quartz crisis here where something was improved upon. We're looking at an entirely different product that basically claws its way to be called a watch. It's not a watch at the end of the day. It's a wearable piece of exercise equipment that Apple worked extremely hard on to change the perception of it. I don't know if you remember when the Apple Watch was initially released, but Apple released it in solid gold. They collaborated with Hermes. They did everything they could to say, hey, this isn't just a piece of exercise equipment. This is so much more. This is a fashion statement. This is a way of living. This is that, this is this, this is that. And at the end of the day, it's not. For me personally, I would think it's weird if someone was wearing a Cartier tank when they were on a construction site doing the jackhammer. I think the Apple Watch anywhere outside of the gym or exercising is weird, especially when you have your phone down in your pocket. Watches at their very essence are tools, and I'm not saying that the Apple Watch isn't, I'm just saying I personally think it's a very specific tool. Yes, it can do messaging, yes, it can do Snapchat, photos, weather, but I don't see that as something that you should always be reaching for to use. I think if you're at the gym, great. Keep it on your wrist, keep your phone in your locker, do your exercise, but then take the watch off. It's not something I think really fits into the world when you have your phone with you because then it's nothing more than a distraction. I see it as the best watch for the gym, 
yes. But you go out, I'd rather go no watch than an Apple watch because if you're meeting with friends, you're talking with people, it's one thing to have your phone in your pocket distracting you. It's another to have something in plain view ringing and beeping and popping up and alerting and it's pulling you out of the moment, which is in essence a very ineffective tool. A tool is supposed to make your life easier and yeah, maybe it does, but also it's pulling you away from your life in general. I was actually talking to my friends and they were asking me about the Apple Watch and I said, you know, I think it's cool. I honestly do, I think the Apple Watch is cool. I put it on my wrist and I'm like, oh, this is cool. I can see this, I can see that. But at the end of the day, no, I don't want it. And really my biggest reason that I said to my friends was, Picture a moment in your life, maybe you're doing something or talking to someone where you don't want your phone on you, then amplify that and strap the phone to your wrist, give it a speaker and make it start ringing during whatever you're doing. And I know I may seem like an Apple Watch hater, but I'm really not. I think they're cool. I think it's cool that you can swim with them, that you can text people just by talking to your wrist. But is it for me? No. Is it for the watch fam? Probably not. Until and only if Apple can find something that makes this an essential piece of technology like they did the phone, it's nothing but a choice. It's never gonna outdo a Rolex. It's never gonna outdo a common wristwatch. Wearing a wristwatch or an analog watch or anything besides like an Apple watch, Daniel Wellington, Michael Kors, anything that you strap onto your wrist should show that you made a conscious choice of, I like the style of this, I like the function of that, and to me, the Apple Watch is a very, very boring choice. So I mean, at the end of the day, if you like it, go ahead and get it. It's a great piece of technology. It does exactly what they advertise, but if you want something that's gonna last you more than five years, maybe start looking at other types of watches. Thank you guys so much for checking this video out. More importantly, thanks so much for checking me out. If you like this video, you can give it a thumbs up and you can also do Christian and Anna and Roly and all the people at Theo and Harry, I guess including me now, wow. You can do us a huge favor by subscribing down below and if you wanna see more vintage watches and less Apple watches like this Rolex, like Omegas, like Tudors, like Universal Genevs, pull routers, anything you can imagine, go to the Theo and Harris watch shop, check out the watches and uh, let me know how you think I should edit the next video. Should I blindfold myself? I don't know.